Hello everyone, Jim here. I'm going to talk about some more Cisco World today. Specifically, we're going to talk about globalization and localization for outbound calls from a Cisco call manager. Uh, so let's jump right into it, shall we? We are going to first take a look at a kind of a general overview. I'm going to have some nice pictures and diagrams. Then we're going to jump into a call manager a lab server and show you where everything is and do some test call examples at the end. All right, so let's jump right in. <clears throat> so globalization and localization. We are going to start with a uh, general overview diagram. All right, and we're going to take a look at how once you lift a phone off hook, what all happens. All right for the call flow going out. Now, if this is your first time dealing with call managers, this is going to look crazy. If you've been in it or and around it for a few years, this still might look quite a bit different than what you're used to for just a plain Jane outbound call. But we're going to do some globalization on the ingress. So your phone goes off hook, you dial a number in our little example here, we're dialing uh, from extension 2000 so that's going to be our call in number and our called number is going to be in this example this 304-555-5555 all right so the first thing to look at is we have a line and a device calling search space and this is within call manager that's assigned to the phones okay and we have some partitions that are within are calling search spaces that allows access all right and we're gonna lift off this extension 2000 we're gonna dial 91304 555 55 55 at this point our called number is showed here and our calling number is shown here now what you might be used to is that you hit a route pattern and then go on out from there to a route list and a route group. But now with this globalization dial plan, we are going to globalize here at the ingress. This is the first spot where we are at the ingress where we can globalize. But instead of a route pattern, it's a translation pattern. Translation patterns are the new route patterns for today's modern dial plan designs. All right, so we're going to hit a translation pattern that has this pattern that looks like it belongs in a route pattern. But we're sticking this 9.1, you know, and 10 more digits here in a translation pattern. Well, this route um, partition, so the partition assigned to this is a PSTN long distance or LD for short and you can see over here that we have that in our calling search space so this phone can reach it so we hit this and we globalize by prefixing a plus so then we have a fully globalized E164 number of plus one 304-555-5555, all right? Now, we came in with a nine, right? We dialed a nine, so what happened to that? Well, during our translation pattern, we strip off the pre-dot. So in our pardon, we have 9.1, 10 digits. So that's how we get to this plus 1304, fully globalized E164 number, all right? So, now what happened? Well, because we've globalized, we can do a lot of things within our cluster, within our dial plans, within our routes. We could do a lot of things here. It makes things like AAR, tell and hop off, uh, mobility, uh, CER. A lot of things become a lot easier by having that fully globalized number. All right. And this kind of out of the scope of this conversation, but maybe in some upcoming videos I can do something like AAR or tell and hop off and you can get an idea of all the different things that we can do with our routing when we're globalized. But today we're going to continue on 
with our conversation of just an outbound call. So our translation pattern has a calling search space and it's assigned to this PSTN calling search space. All right. And within our example, we have a PSTN partition that's within that. So now we still have a route pattern so that we can deal with route lists and route groups and stuff like that, like the old way. However, now we have very, very few route patterns. And in basic call managers where you're not having, well, you don't have a lot of sites, you don't have international sites and uh, sites within the USA, well, you just have a very basic system, you'll probably just have one route pattern. And it consists of this dash plus bang. So what does that do? Well, this plus here, well, first, let's deal with the slash. The slash is just a special character that allows the plus to be there. It's saying it's a special character. It's a plus. This back, uh, backslash allows that to be there. Okay. Well, this is going to match everything from our translation patterns. Because when we dig in deeper, all of our translation patterns, whether it's a long distance, a local call, a 911 call, an international call, we're all going to prefix a plus to those. So because of that, our route pattern that matches a plus, and this bang means anything after that, well, that's, that's it. Our route pattern will match any of those uh, calling numbers, or called numbers, excuse me. All right? So and we're not going to do any digit manipulation here. All we're doing is, hey, we're grabbing this, and we're going to assign it to this PSTN route list. And we're going to do some special magic here in this PSTN route list, okay? Because in this route list, we are going to assign a variable. And that's the standard local route group. That standard local route group will be the only thing in the uh, PSTN route list. We won't have a bunch of different gateways or route groups assigned to it. Just the standard local route group. So then that variable is assigned over in the device pool that the phone sits in. All right. And we, in this example, we're calling it the HQ device pool. And it's got that standard local route group in there. So then that variable that sits within our device pool there's a section that we'll get to in a minute that says, hey, here's our route group for this device pool. So any phones that are assigned with that device pool are going to use that gateway setting. Now within the gateway settings, the calls finally made it to, to this section. It's going to look at its outbound settings within your gateway. All right. So whether we have a SIP trunk or a H323 or MGCP gateway, it's going to look at these outbound settings and it's got a special, a couple special transformation calling search spaces. And this, I've named it gateway, GW, called, CLD, or calling, CLL, calling search space. Well, within those things is how we're going to localize back out to our PSTN because our PSTN, well, some of them may now, but <laughs> as an overall average, they're not going to accept that plus. So we're going to localize back out to our gateway. And we're going to have that with these transformations. All right. So we're going to have a pattern of looks very similar, similar to our route pattern with this plus bang, except we've got a dot there. So what this is going to do, it's going to discard, and this we're looking specifically at our called. So remember, we called 91304, which turned into plus one, then the number. Now it's matched that route pattern, gone to our device pool variable, looked at the gateway, the gateway settings say, hey, I've got this calling search space of GWCLD CSS. Well, there's a partition over here with this pattern that this get this calling search space can get to and we say hey, there's a plus well we're matching that that plus has come all the way through here 
and then the number after. We're gonna dis we're gonna discard the pre dot. So we're getting rid of that plus, and we're gonna prefix a nine. Well, that's exactly what we started with up here. Well, we globalize within the system, then we localize to get back out to the gateway. And we're removing that plus, putting the 9 back on it, so then when the call actually goes to the physical gateway, there's a dial pier sitting in there that has 9 whatever to match your dial piers that can get out whatever medium you have on that gateway. A SIP trunk, a PRI, a regular old POTS line, whatever it may be. Well, this is there because of numerous reasons. One, so you don't have overlapping dial plans. It helps to avoid that, any problems it may come into. And definitely SRST. So you can have your nine dialing all the way through. And we also will have a calling transform on that gateway because look, we went off with 2000 here. Well, if we don't have set a external phone number mask on the line settings, that's going to go all the way out, and, and the PSTN world's not going to like that, 2000. So, we apply another transformation mask with this 2XXX. Well, our 2XXX numbers in our example, we're going to say their DIDs start with 304-5552, and then match the rest of our internal dial plan so when a 2000 hits this mask it's going to prefix 304555 to it and it'll go on out so you can see here our called number winds up again to be 91 in the number and our calling number now has that prefix 304555 and off it goes towards the gateway and hits its dial peers and on out your PSTN medium. So let's dig a little further into this so you can uh, you know, know a little bit more than just a diagram, right? So let's first talk about the line and device calling search space, all right? Which are going to be assigned to your devices within Call Manager. Well, the line calling search space, which is in the line settings on your device, actually has the priority and I use this line calling search space for outbound calling and security routing okay then there's a device calling search space which was in the device section in call manager that's actually truncated to the line and is uh, second in line according to the line calling search space being first then the device calling search space going on down the line and then it's also ordered list within each of those calling search space. So you go off hook, it's going to search through your line calling search space first, then your device calling search space in an ordered fashion to find a partition that is allowed. All right. So if we take a look at another example here, we have an emergency partition within our line well that's the first thing it's gonna get to right and that's by design if it's an emergency call we want that partition to be available first mm -hmm. we also have a restricted partition which we use for security for outbound calls it's gonna be second in our list and then we go on out to our outbound calling so within our line and this is just a small example of what you might find in a line calling search space here and the device calling search space we have a couple fields here well this is truncated to become this when it goes down the line when you actually go off hook so you can see it just goes in an ordered list from the line down to the device so now that we have that understood let's see what exactly this restricted partition and what I mean by a little bit of security all right so here's an example of a line calling search space and remember it has the priority in our list well if it's not an emergency call the second partition that is allowed is the restricted partition well what in the world does that do well we have some translation patterns that are in the uh, NANP format of 9.at 
and that at is what makes it a NAP numbering plan, North American numbering plan. And within that, you can add route filters. And I have an example here of some numbers I have comprised over the years and put into route filters. And these are numbers that we don't want to be allowed to dial. So, as you can imagine, you can create all sorts of route filters and uh, numbers within those route filters that you don't want your organization to be able to dial. Well, because that restricted partition is there second in line, if someone goes off hook and dials 9268, for example, as the area code, well, this thing is going to check in this 9.at part uh, translation pattern and see this is allowed by the restricted partition this is assigned to and it's got this route filter assigned what well, says area code two six four or eight so two six eight was dialed okay that's a match well look here block it with the call rejected so any of these numbers area code specific here that are dialed are going to get blocked by this restricted partition all right so that's what we could do with a little bit of outbound security. So what happens if we go off hook and we dial and it does not match anything within these route filters or these translation patterns with route filters? Well, we're going to go on down the line of our in order partition lists. All right. So if we pass the restricted section, we're going to, as we're saying it's an outbound call. We're going to hit start hitting these PSTNs, partitions, and we're going to start with our globalization of the called number. All right, and we're going to globalize at the ingress. Well, our line calling search space is the first match or section that's going to look for matches. And in the line calling search space, we get to these PSTN partitions. Well, our uh, matching pattern in a translation pattern is going to have that PSTN LD that we see here. So if we dialed a 9, 1, and a number, we're going to hit this translation pattern, which is allowed via this partition. And we're going to do what I talked about earlier of globalizing that number by adding a plus. And don't forget, we are discarding digits with the pre-dot. So this 9 goes away and we prefix a plus on the front end of this number. All right. So, as I alluded to earlier, the translation pattern is in fact the new route pattern. And we can see that here, these translation patterns, we're looking at this long distance um, partition again here. This is in a translation pattern, not a route pattern. And in this calling search space, we're hitting this PSTN calling search space. Well, within that, we see only one partition it can get to, and I've named it in this case, the E164 route RT partition. So our one single route pattern matches all of the pluses that our different translation patterns prefix with, which we saw on the previous slide. So we're gonna match this plus whatever our route partition is allowing this call flow from our calling search space of, over here. And we are allowing this call to route and we're going out the gateway with the PSTN route list. All right. And then we get into that topic of the standard local route group. Right. So we have our gateway of the PSTN route list. Well, within that PSTN route list, we have only one selected group and it's a wild card or variable whatever terminology is best for you to remember this is just a variable here of the standard local route group and this standard local route group becomes the variable in the device pool that the phones are assigned to so in our device pool with the name HQ we have this local route group setting of our HQ SIP route group and within that route group is our SIP gateway. 
So this variable at the device pool allows this call to go on and follow the settings within this gateway here at the HQ SIP route group and continue its path out. And whatever settings are in there is where we go to our calling transformations. And we have a catch-all here. So uh, this is calling transformation. So our calling number and our original example of 2000 is the DN that went off hook. Well, we have a catch-all because we might have the check mark there for use external phone number mask. And we might have a, a number already assigned there all right so we're gonna discard the pre dot get that plus out of there if there is a plus on the calling if not if we just have a regular plain Jane external phone number mask without a plus this pattern won't be matched and your calling number will continue out as whatever's in your external phone number but in our case of the 2000 or 3000, it looks like I've switched examples here. We have a 3XXX. Well, if 3001 goes off hook, that calling number, we don't want to be 3001. Well, this pattern matches on this. This sys gateway calling partition is in a calling search space that's on the SIP gateway in our example. Well, it's going to match and it's going to say, okay, well, let's use 304721 and then whatever. 3001, 3002, 3000, and so forth and so on. Okay? And if we ever happen to get a plus and then a number, we get rid of that plus and, and then send that number on out with the pre dot for the call in. So now let's look at the called number trans transformations we also have a catch-all for that so our called number 91304 whatever the number 10 digits after it's going to match this because it's got a plus in front of it this partition is also in the called section of their SIP gateway in this case we're going to discard the pre dot so let's take that plus off we're going to prefix a 9 right back to it which goes on to our gateway and hits a dial pier to get out or if you want to get specific with a certain local area code and your local uh, PRI or SIP medium and you try to use just this and you get that, we're sorry, you don't need a one to dial the number. What well, similar message? You can get specific to um, called numbers and manipulate it however you like. In this example, we're doing a pre dot so it gets rid of the plus and the one. We prefix a nine in front of that, so it's just going to be nine three zero four instead of nine one three zero four when it goes on out to the PSTN. Or you can put the dot way over here after the three zero four, and you'll be sending seven digits to the uh, provider. As long as you have a dial peer upstream in your gateway that will accept that, you can do it. If you are, if you have a bunch of different branch locations, these patterns for calling and called will grow and you can specify per the called number what you want it to do when it goes out to your other branch location. You might want this to translate to a internal four digit. All right, there's a ton of things you, the, and within this, is also how a lot of the AAR stuff will happen. All right. So, with that said, I'm done with all the pretty pictures. Let's dig into call manager, shall we? All right. So here we go. Let's get this off of there, and we're gonna go right in the call manager. Now you can see this is just a demo lab setup, and we're gonna start at the phone so we can see what we've been talking about here. We've got a lab soft phone that's registered. And here within the device settings is our device calling search space, which I've conveniently named device CSS. Well, over here at the line level, we have a calling search space, which I've named line CSS. Pop quiz, 
which has priority the line or directory number calling search space or the device uh, it's the line so this one goes first then the device so when this 3001 goes off hook it's going to look at this line calling search space first for its next route so over here in our line calling search space You can see we have that emergency, then the restricted, and then we go on down through to our PSCN call flow. So in the event that we dialed 9, 1, and then the number, or 9, and then a 10-digit number is going to hit one of these. And this is for toll-free, by the way. And you could also have more, uh, you could also have a international one, which I just have not included in my default line calling search space. I would have a different line dash class of restriction that would include the PSTN International. All right. In this case, my default one, I'm just going up to long distance and toll free. But anyway, for an outbound call, that partition will be hit, and that is where a uh, route. No, translation pattern. And within here, you can see that we have what normally we would look like to be in our route patterns, but they're now in the translations. There's 911, there's our local, there's our long distance, and emergency calls, and here is our restricted, and also a toll free, which also has a route filter. And we can specify which 800 numbers that we're going to allow out of our organization. Okay? With that same logic as before. So let's get back to our translation patterns. And we'll just take a look at that. PSTN toll-free calls. Well, if we hit that 9-1-800, it's going to hit this pattern. As long as the route filter says, hey, yeah, you could dial it 800. It's going to say, cool, discard the nine, prefix, plus one. So now we have plus one, 800, blah, 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 blah. And actually, this should just be a plus because most people are going to dial one, 800, right? Nine, one, 800. So you don't want two ones in there. So that was a typo on my case. We'll just prefix a plus. And so now we've got that plus in front of it, which is the only thing that matters to get to our next step of our call flow, which is the route pattern. And we can hit this with our PSTN calling search space, which as we remember has only one partition in it. And that's over here at our one route pattern with this E164 route. And I've labeled this one with a PSTN route. So now we get to this guy, we're doing nothing more than assigning a route list, this PS10 route list. And once again, it is a variable, <coughs> excuse me, within our route list, look, just one route list, standard local route group. That's it, that's our variable. Well, what, what, what are you talking about? What variable? We assign it at the device pool level. Over here, in our HQ device pool, I have said, hey, our standard local route group is going to be this HQ SIP route group. So I've still assigned a route group. So if we go to route group under route hunt, and you still can have multiple ones in here, but I'm just assigning this one to the HQ device pool. And that's all that that looks to. And you can have backups, uh, gateways that you want to go uh, assign to this group, but it's still the variable that's in the device pool, right? So you can still have, I don't know, branch one, the secondary to get out. So what, well, what is this HQ SIP? This is our uh, SIP trunk in this example. Here it is, HQ SIP, and this is how we're getting in and outbound calls. So here is our inbound calls for if we get an incoming call, 
and if you seen my previous video you know we're adding this plus one coming in but now we're talking about outbound so we have assigned the called party and calling party transformations with these calling search spaces hmm. that's going to give us the calling and called numbers that we need to localize to go back out towards our gateway for a outbound called number all right and i'm just giving you a whole view of my gateway there so what in the world are these transformations about right well, let's start with the calling. You saw a calling that's assigned to the device pool for localization to the phone display when we are receiving an inbound call, if you watched my previous video, and that was set here. Well, now for outbound calls, here is our specific example of a 3001 extension that our soft phone is using 3001 so if it matches this we're going to prefix 304721 and that's how it's going to go out our gateway for the call in number going out and once again i also have a catch-all here for the gateway calling locus localization towards the gateway so if I happen to do an external phone number mask or um, a enterprise line setting that is fully globalized with the plus, this will match it and strip off that plus and just send the rest of the number on out. So I have that catch all there just in case. Now, let's look at our transformations for our called. This is how we get back out to the gateway. And in this small example, we only have one. And we're going to discard this pre dot, prefix the nine. So our called number now becomes nine and the number that was dialed. And onto the gateway it goes. What gateway? It's the one assigned over here in the device pool. Remember? With our variable standard local route group that phone is assigned the device pool HQ where that variable resides so multiple locations different device pools with different route groups assigned in that variable determines the gateway and your translation transformations will grow if you have different sites and you want to do specific called and call in transformations. All right. So let's see it, shall we? Let's see it in action here. And I, up on the other screen, I am bringing up my gateway, um, which is over here, actual SIP trunk, which goes to our gateway. I'm just going to log into that so we can see the logs that go to this guy. So I'm going to bring that up and I'm going to bring up the soft phone. Let me turn on some debugs here. There we go. <coughs> so if I go off hook and I dial uh nine three oh four two oh seven zero five ten we see at first there's a plus there there's some sip debugs going on and it's taking a little bit of time due to my sip uh, my lab sip trunk it'll kick over here but it goes and now we're ringing out to the pstn and there's my other lab phone buzzing Buzz. All right, so we've got a successful outbound call. Let me stop this. And we'll scroll back up here. And we saw on our display, it said plus. And the number. But by the time it got here, our invite just said 9-1 and the number. That's it. Because of our transformations. Those guys are very handy. 
and it took off that plus one and added the nine to go to our gateway. So now our gateway receives this SIP signaling and it has a dial peer in here and uh, as you can see it says, let me expand this a bit. So we had our initial, let me scroll, there we go, our initial invite and then the gateway is, hey I'm going to try that from our lab phone one but you could see it prefixed 304721 to our 3001 our handy dandy calling transformation mask right and then the gateway there it hit a dial peer because now look the nine stripped well my particular sip uh provider here in the lab is allowing the one to go out for this and we've prefixed the nine and like I was saying, there is some issues with my SIP trunk that I first said, well, that's, that's not authorized. And I just have to log back into the portal and correct some issues. But anyway, our number initially finally makes its way out after a couple of different invites. And out towards it, it went and rang out to our another lab number here. And we had a successful outbound call. And we could say the same whether it was a long distance or a local call would all hit the same flow with that plus hitting the one route pattern and our magic of the standard local route group that it's assigned to and that's assigned where that variable within this route list it's set on the device pool so now we've successfully walked all the way through an outbound call. Now this may seem a little daunting and a lot of, to some of you it might be considered a lot of extra work just to get this new fangled uh, globalization and localization figured out. But it gets you a lot in the long run. You can troubleshoot a lot easier with it because all your numbers are going to have plus. You know exactly where it's going to route to. You could do a lot more within your system with uh, CER, with AAR, tell-end hop-off, mobility settings, speed dials, corporate directories, outbound redirecting numbers, right? We talked about that on the incoming section. Well, we could go to our placed, received calls here and um, our directory. Placed calls, missed calls, and we could dial that out and it will work. Uh, specifically, I was referring to the uh, missed calls section, right? We can definitely do a redial from that and it will go flow back out the PSTN. And how that works before we wrap this up is there is another translation pattern in here and that translation pattern needs to be added uh, between recordings here it's been removed but there is another plus bang pattern that looks exactly like the route pattern except we're going to put this E164 redial partition in here and we can name it appropriately <coughs> excuse me and our calling search space is going to go right back out to our PSTN world, right? And that's it. We're matching the plus, and it's going to, for a redial, so if our directory here, our missed received calls, on the inbound, because of that plus one, that's a whole back conversation on a previous video, it adds that plus in there in the directory. So we can hit redial and that plus will match this pattern and it will go right back out to the calling search space and I always a little hot tip I always like to use the uh, calling parties external phone number mask on these in case I want to set them right in our example here we have just a four digit internal dial but if I wanted to put an external phone number mask on there, I'd want that to match on through. And then we wouldn't have to worry about calling side, right? For these transforms, 
we wouldn't necessarily have to have a pattern if we had a specific um, external phone number mask. We could just use the ones we have here for our calling. If we wanted to do a plus, that would match it. Or internal, it would match it. But I like the option of having the external phone number mask, and I could put a plus on it if I want to. Anyway, our translation pattern, and I think I just, yeah, I saved it. So we have, this gets us to redial back out, and it will go right back out the route, hit our standard local route group, and on out to the PS10. We don't have to do any digit manipulation because that plus is already there. And this translation is going to match it, and off we go. I thank you very much for watching another one of my videos. I hope that it's been informative. I really, really hope that you've got something out of it and can help yourself, uh, you know, get out inbound and outbound calls within your organization and hope that it helps with all the complex designs that are out there now. So this is, you know, my take on globalization and localization previous video inbound this video outbound calls thank you very much for watching and until next time see you later